Hello, okay, so we're gonna be talking about two different things today. The first thing we're gonna be talking about is simplifying radicals. Now, all of these right here are perfect squares that we're familiar with, right? So for example, the square root of 16 is four because four times four gives you 16. Um, the square root of 49 is seven because seven times seven gives you 49. So now we're gonna be talking about examples today where you may not have a perfect square under the radical. So for example, radical 18. And we're gonna talk about how to simplify radicals like this. Now, before we do, I just wanna point out, as far as variables go, okay, all of these listed here are perfect squares. And what you might notice is that all of their exponents are even. So as long as a variable term has an even exponent, it is a perfect square. Okay, so why don't you just take a minute and write that down in your notes, okay? All of these have even exponents, and as long as an exponent is even, the term itself is a perfect square. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look, look at some examples on the bottom here. So if we take a look at number one, now we could see under here, right? 75 is not a perfect square. And x to the ninth is not a perfect square. I mean, 9 is a perfect square, but x to the ninth is not because it's not an even exponent. So what we want to do to simplify this radical is we want to try to get as many perfect squares as we can out of this radical. All right, so this is what I do. I like to break it up into two separate radicals. This first radical is where we're going to put all our perfect squares, and the second radical is where we're going to put everything that we're left over with. So when you look at the number 75, right, you want to look at our list up here and say, well, what's the biggest perfect square that divides evenly into 75? Okay, we could see it's going to be 25 right here. Okay, this is the biggest perfect square that divides evenly into 75. So I'm going to put that in my perfect square radical. Now, since 75 divided by 25 is 3, right, or you could think about it as 25 times 3 gives you 75, this 3 is going to go in our leftover radical. Okay, basically these two numbers have to multiply together to give us what was under the original radical. Okay, now let's look at x to the ninth. That's not a perfect square because it's not on our list up here. So we need to say, well, what's the biggest perfect square that we could pull out of an x to the ninth? Well, if we look through our list, right, x to the ninth would be right here. Okay, so the biggest perfect square that's less than x to the ninth would be right here, x to the eighth. You're basically looking on this list and saying what exponent is smaller than x to the ninth but is on this list? x to the eighth is the biggest one we see. So since x to the eighth times x to the first, I'm gonna put that one there for a minute. So since x to the 8th times x to the 1st gives us x to the ninth, right? Because when you multiply two terms with the same base, you add the exponents. We're going to have to put the leftover x to the 1st right here. Now, I'm actually going to erase that exponent. You don't really need that there. Okay, so now everything in here is a perfect square. So we're going to just simplify this radical. So the square root of 25 is 5. And the square root of x to the 8th, remember, when you take the square root, of a variable term with an exponent, all you do is cut that exponent in half. So the square root of x to the eighth would be x to the fourth, because x to the fourth times x to the fourth gives us x to the eighth. And then everything that you're left with is in this radical should not simplify for us. That's our leftover terms, so you're going to take these and just bring it right down. Okay, and this is our answer. We took as much as we could out of the radical, and this is what we were left over with that we couldn't take out in the end. Okay, what I did was, I just kind of copied this from the top of our screen so I didn't have to keep going back and forth. So we're gonna use this for reference. Okay, so number three. If we look under our radical, right, we see some things that are perfect squares and some things that are not. So because not everything is a perfect square, we wanna take this and break this up into two separate radicals our perfect square radical, and our leftovers. Okay, so let's look. 48 is not on our list over here, but wouldn't 48 be right here, right? 
So what we're going to do is we, if we want to find the biggest number that divides evenly into 48, that is a perfect square, let's work our way down the list. Well, this doesn't work. This doesn't work. Look at this. 16 works. Isn't 48 divided by 16, 3? So I'm going to put the 16 in my perfect square radical and the 3 in the leftover radical. Okay, so this is the biggest perfect square on our list that divides evenly into 48. Now, I just want to point out, like 4 divides evenly into 48, but that's not our biggest one, so we don't want to pick that one. We want to get as much out of the radical as we can. All right, now we have an x to the fifth. Now, this has an odd exponent, so it's not a perfect square. That's not on our list. So x to the fifth would be right here. So as we work our way back, wouldn't x to the fourth be the biggest perfect square that we can pull out, you know, take out of this list? So x to the fourth is going to be the biggest perfect square that we could pull out of x to the fifth. That's what we're going to put in our perfect square radical. But we have a leftover x, right? We're going to put that in our leftover radical. x to the fourth times x to the first gives us x to the fifth. So this is our perfect square, and this is our leftover. Okay, now if you look at these last two terms, these are perfect squares because they have even exponents, right? As long as you have an even exponent, they're perfect squares. So I'm going to take them and bring the whole thing into our perfect square radical. Let's see if I can fit this. There we go. Squeeze it in. Okay, so now we're just going to take the square root of everything in the perfect square radical. So the square root of 16 is 4. The square root of x to the 4th, remember you just cut the exponent in half, would be x squared. The square root of y to the 4th, cut the exponent in half, would be y squared. And the square root of z squared would be just z to the 1st, right? Which I'm going to write as just z. And then we could bring down our leftover radical. And here we have it. This is in simplest radical form. We simplify the radical. All right, then let's take a look at number 5. Now, we have a negative 4 hanging out in the front here. That's okay. That just means we're going to bring it down for now. And since this means negative 4 times radical this, we're just going to multiply our final answer by negative 4 in the end. So let's bring down the negative 4 and open up our perfect square radical and then whatever we're left over with. Okay, so here's 32. 32 is not a perfect square. It's not on our list. But 32, isn't that a number that falls between 25 and 36? So let's work our way back. Well, 25 doesn't divide evenly into 32. 16 does. So this is going to be the biggest perfect square that divides evenly into 32. So I'm going to put 16 here. And since 16 times 2 gives us 32, I'm going to put a 2 in this radical. All right. And again, I want to point out, although... 4 divides evenly into 32. It's not the biggest perfect square, so we don't want to pick that one. Okay, since x to the 7th has an odd exponent, it's not a big, it's not a perfect square, right? We need even exponents. So x to the 7th would fall right here. So if we work our way back, x to the 6th would be the biggest perfect square that we can pull out of an x to the 7th. And that would leave me with one more to put in my leftovers, right? Because 6 plus 1 gives me 7. x to the 6th times x to the 1st gives me x to the 7th because we add exponents when we're multiplying. Okay, y to the 8th. That's an even exponent, so that is a perfect square. I'm going to put the whole thing right here in my perfect square radical. And then z to the 15th, this is an odd exponent. So z to the 15th, right, would fall right here. So if we work our way back, z to the 14th would be the biggest perfect square that we could pull out. I mean, basically, because isn't 14 the biggest even number that's less than 15? So then that would leave us with a z to put in our leftover radical. All right, so now I'm going to bring down the negative 4. And I'm going to open a parenthesis because I want to separate this negative 4 from what I'm putting here. All right, so when I take all this out of the radicals, the square root of 16 is 4. The square root of x to the 6 is x to the 3rd. Remember, we just cut the exponent in half. So that being said, the square root of y to the 8th would be y to the 4th. And the square root of z to the 14th would be z to the 7th. Okay, again, we just cut the exponent in half. And then I'm going to bring down the leftover radical. Okay, so now to finish, all I really have to do is just multiply these two numbers. This is going to give me 
negative 16, x to the third, y to the fourth, c to the seventh, and then bring down the radical 2xz. And oh, there we have it. That's our answer. All right, if you turn to the next page uh, in your packet, the second thing we're going to talk about is our basic exponent rules. And you have covered these before, but I'm going to go over them again just to make sure that we remember everything. Okay, so when you're adding, right, these are called like terms. If you have like terms and you want to add them together, you just add the numbers in front and you keep the exponents. So basically, 1x cubed plus 1x cubed is 2x cubed. Okay, so when you're combining like terms, you keep those exponents and you just add the numbers that's in front. 1 plus 1 is 2. Okay, now when you're multiplying two terms with the same base, you can multiply the numbers in front, right? 1 times 1 is 1. But what we're doing here is we're adding the exponents. x to the 4th times x to the 3rd is x to the 7th. Okay, so when you're multiplying, that's when the exponents change. That's when you add the exponents. When you're dividing two terms with the same base, okay, you could divide the numbers in front if you want. 1 divided by 1 is 1. And x to the 10th divided by x squared is x to the 8th. Okay, you subtract the exponents. Okay, I just want to quickly show you why. Okay, as far as multiplication goes, if you have x to the 4th, 4x is being multiplied together, times x to the 3rd, 3x is being multiplied together. All together, we have 7 of them. Okay, so x to the 7th. That's why we add the exponents. As far as division goes, if we have x to the 10th, right, 10x is being multiplied together, divided by x squared, 2x is being multiplied together. Basically, what's going to happen is two of these x's on top will cancel with two of the x's on bottom, leaving you with 8x's being multiplied together. That's where the x to the 8th comes from. So again, when you're multiplying, you add the exponents. When you're dividing, you subtract the exponents. Okay, now, when you raise a power to another power, this is when you multiply the exponents. So since 2 times 6 is 12, this would be equal to x to the 12th power. Okay, just to show you why, right? This means we have 6 x squared. So x squared times 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 x squared. We have six of them. Remember we said when we're multiplying terms with the same base, we add the exponents. Isn't 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 12? Okay, well the shortcut way is just multiply these two powers. Okay, now anything raised to the zero power is equal to 1. I mean you could take out your calculator and try it. Plug in 8 to the zero power it's equal to 1. 10 to the 0 power, it's equal to 1. So if you take 2x and raise this whole expression to the 0 power, it's equal to 1. Okay, anything to the 0 power equals 1. So those are our basic exponent rules, and I'm just going to kind of go into a little more detail over here. But basically, a power of a product. If you have a few things within the parentheses being raised to a power, you just individually raise each of these to this power. So we're going to take a look at this as we're going to take 5 and raise it to the second power. Isn't 5 to the second power just 25, right? 5 squared. And then we also have to raise the x to the second power. So we're going to write x squared. And then here, you're going to take the y cubed and raise it to the second power. So remember, when you have a power raised to another power, we multiply those exponents. So it's going to be y to the sixth. So, I mean, really, just if you have parentheses, just make sure you raise everything within that parenthesis to whatever power is on the outside. So, same thing here. If we have a fraction being raised to the second power, you're just going to raise the numerator as well as the denominator to the second power. So, 3 squared is equal to 9, and then 4 squared is equal to 16. All right, so what we're going to do now is we are going to apply these rules to some examples at the bottom of the page. Okay, so number seven. So we're adding like terms. We know they're like terms because they both have an x squared, right? The exponent is the same. 
So if you have 5x squared plus 3x squared, remember, all we do is we add the numbers in front. So since 5 plus 3 is 8, this is going to be equal to 8x squared. Okay, if you have 5x squareds and then 3 more x squareds, all together we have 8x squareds. All right, number 9. Now we're multiplying two terms with the same base. Remember, when you're multiplying two terms with the same base, right, what do we do with the exponents up here? We added them. Let's do the same thing here. m to the 6 times m to the 3rd is m to the 9th. Okay, you just keep that base of m and you add the exponents. All right, down here, number 11. Now, if you look in here, right, we have 2x to the 5th all being raised to the 3rd power. So we have to first raise this 2 to the 3rd power, right? Now, 2 to the 3rd power, you don't do 2 times 3. I'm going to actually write this out. 2 to the 3rd power means 2 times 2 times 2. It means we have 3 of them being multiplied together. So 2 times 2 times 2, 2 times 2 is 4, times another 2 is 8. And then we also have to take this x to the 5th and raise it to the 3rd power. Now remember, when you have a power raised to another power, okay, just like we had here, we multiply those powers. So since 5 times 3 is 15, we can bring this down as x to the 15th. But anyway, 8x to the 15th is going to be our final answer here. I'm going to circle that. I guess I could circle all of these, right? All right, let's take a look at the last three on the bottom of the page. Now, we did say that anything raised to the 0 power is equal to 1. But it's not this whole thing that's being raised to the zero power, just the m is. This 3, believe it or not, actually has a little exponent of a 1. This is 3 to the first times m to the zero. So this is really 3 times this term right here equals 1. So 3 times 1. So this is going to be equal to 3. And let me just show you the difference. If the 3m was in parentheses, like if we saw this, right? You can write this on your paper if you want. If we saw 3m in parentheses being raised to the 0, then this whole thing is being raised to the 0 power. So then that would be equal to 1. All right, number 15. Now, number 15, we see division here. So we know that with division, with the numbers, we're just going to divide them, right? 18 divided by 9 is 2. And then remember, when you're dividing two terms with the same base, you subtract the exponents. So 6 minus 2 is 4, so we're going to wind up getting x to the 4th. Okay, you could think about it as two of the x's on the bottom cancel off with two of the x's on the top, so it leaves you with four x's left on the top. So this is the answer. All right, and then finally, number 17. Well, there's a little bit going on here, so let's take a look at this. So let's just work with the numerator first. So in the numerator, we're multiplying two terms with the same base, so we know we want to add the exponents. So 10 plus 6 is 16. So we get x to the 16th power. Actually, I like this one because it kind of uses all the rules here. So now on the bottom, right, in the denominator, we have a power being raised to another power. So we know when that happens, we're going to multiply these numbers. So 4 times 2 is 8. So it gives us x to the 8th power. Okay, and then we got to take it a step further, right? Now we're dividing two terms with the same base. So we know when that happens, we keep the base and we subtract the exponents. So 16 minus 8 is 8, so we wind up getting x to the 8th power. 